It's time for a trip to the dark side realm of Transformers toys. This mega double episode will explore Transformers Age of Explosives. I guarantee there'll be no revenge from the fallen after the blasts. My Decepticon toy crusher gets a workout and will explore Transformers robot toys that are not really Transformers. And most importantly, please do not attempt to replicate the chaos you see in this video at home. Leave this nasty sort of work to the professionals. Transformers, robots in disguise. Transformers, more than meets the eyes. Okay, our first duck side, Transformers. It's a double pack. It looks like Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. This nasty knockoff stuff cost me $79.99. That's one cent off $80. I think it's under the guise of, well, it's a great big box of Transformers. We'll just whack a big price on it. All over the box, there's some very strange box reads, but you get that with the dark side. But I guarantee that when we pull the toys out to take a look, we're going to see some fairly nasty Transformers toys. On the edge of the box, this read here, let me have a read for you. Over the years, Power Robot has proved himself to be not only a great leader, but also one of the most powerful warriors in the universe. He is trained in the use of almost ant weapon, incorporating them into his combat tactics, tit out effort. He is a walking arsenal with unstoppable combat capabilities. Well, we'll see how unstoppable he is once I get one of my weapons onto him. Here's a clang of dark side read. Product and colors may vary. Return this package for future reveals. Underneath the box, it looks like this, and there's some artwork there uh, pointing out to some other versions. If they exist, who knows? Coming in for the unboxing. Uh, I like the set because it was a double act. The fact that Bumblebee is there and Optimus Prime. I saw plenty of the Bumblebee by itself getting about. I sort of remember the real toy like this, and it wasn't a cheap toy. Oh yeah, guns galore. I can't wait to destroy these bad boys. Well, I dare say, uh, coming through camera, these look fairly awesome, but once I lay hands on these toys, uh, they feel uh, very, very cheap. A lot of Sharpies on them, uh, not very well finished off. I've actually got some nice Transformers toys, the real ones, and they don't feel like this. Yes. I've got a lot of snipping to do to get these bad puppies out. Uh, just give me a second. And I better show some snipping shots because for some reason people enjoy seeing toys being snipped out of packaging. Don't ask me why. Okay, hopefully Bumblebee is free. I know this is a thing here I can pull out. I think there's a noisemaker in him. Oh. <laughs> Man, it's like a dinosaur sound. Is that Transformers sounds? I know they're very annoying sounds. Oh boy, oh boy. It's just, it's like a big floppy rag doll. There's no, uh, none of the hinges or anything. There's no tightness in it. That's wrong, isn't it? And we'll get Optimus Prime out. <laughs> he comes o Optimus, or Osimus as my son calls him. Uh, he just feels very cheap rag doll as well. I go and lay next to Bumblebee. A couple of uh, Bumblebee's doors here. And he's magnificent, very plastic and very light gun here. It's as light as a feather. Um, don't be impressed by this, it's just rubbish. And there's another curiosity about the artwork in this box. Let me just get rid of this plastic piece. Okay, well study that there. It's actually like an earth shot. Uh, the country we're sort of looking at there is America. That is North America. There is Florida there. The Kennedy Space Center is just in that crease, I believe. Coming up here, we've got South Carolina, North Carolina. Don't know much else because I'm from Australia. <laughs> but it's like this giant snowstorm uh, right in the middle of America. That's where my viewing audience is, is these states here. Iowa, North Dakota, that's about all I know. <laughs> Don't test me, please. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> I didn't learn. I didn't learn that stuff at school. Let me off, please. Okay, get away from that map of the USA before I get into any more trouble. Uh, here is Bumblebee. I've put the doors on, hopefully in the right spot. It is standing up, only just. I've actually inserted the gun into the hand. I suppose you could have it as a bit of a destructor model. Someone made a suggestion that these models are good for ones if you want to have a battle version one. You want to rip it apart a bit. And he's wanted to bend over because he doesn't want to stand up because he's Faco. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 
He's, he's not the only one suffering that problem. Optimus Prime. Um, I mean, they're funny toys. He will not... He's, he's got a back problem. He needs to go see the chiropractor. <laughs> he just doesn't want to... <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, should I do another take? Or should I just keep going? But I think you can see this is the problem with these toys. It looks half impressive. But the joints and all are, are like Ragdoll. Okay, if you want Ragdoll Transformers, well, here, this is perfect for you. Um... Maybe I should try and convert Bumblebee into a car. On the back of the box, <laughs> there's instructions here, okay? And I'm chronically bad at doing these toys, but I will try and transform uh, Bumblebee. Well, I've spun those guns back. Um, probably some of the audience out there think, oh, yeah, come on, it's like this, this, and this. Well, it's okay for you guys, because you guys are experts. I'm just a clown, okay? And if I... And we're going to struggle with this too long, I'm just going to give up and you'll never see it in car mode. Noticing how Optimus Prime is helping me there? Not. Just laying down on the job. Um, oh yeah, it's sort of getting there. Just, well, sort of. I hope. I'll get there. I'll try. I'll do my best, boys and girls. I promise. Well, about uh, 10 minutes has gone by since you last saw an edit in this video. Um, I'm just struggling to get the work out how to hide these arms uh, underneath here. <clears throat> Welcome to the dark side! Or just as me who can't do these toys. If I'm a son here, I bet you could work it out really fast. I got one side sort of getting there. Uh, I'm just not getting the other side done. Oh, oh. It's getting there, it's just a lot of weird manipulation of these underneath bits. The, the normal Transformers toys, the real ones sound like this when you're transforming them, but that car door keeps coming off. How annoying is that? I am slowly, but surely getting there. Believe it or not, it is clipping into place. It's half done my brain, I tell you. I haven't got a Transformers brain. And I'm not making the sound. Apparently that helps. That's what I taught my son. I'm getting very, very close. And it's been very frustrating. Oh, come on! Well, I'm about 20 minutes into this horror transformation now, and I'm at the point where when I get one part together, like another side will just pop open. It is so frustrating to see. I don't know whether I'm dealing with the fact that it's dark side, or whether it's, I'm just a hopeless transformation builder of these toys. It just sounds cheap and nasty. So I'll get all that in, and then you'll find the other side would have all undone. Oh. Come on, please get together, Bumblebee. Oh, back bit keeps popping open. I'm so close to getting Mr. Hammer and just giving this a giant whack. It's not funny. I can't express to you how frustrating this thing is. Okay, well, that's about as good as I'm going to get Bumblebee. Uh, extremely frustrating, horrible plastic thing. I'm surprised pieces didn't break the way I was forcing this thing. The activation button is now with the bumper here. <coughs> Oh. I won't do any more of those because they're highly annoying. Uh, this was the side I just couldn't get finished off properly. I will show you the underneath here. It looks like that underneath. Who knows if I've done that correctly or not. There, so you'll be screaming at me. Oh, but Leo, you've got that around the wrong way or back the front. Please let me off because I'm not an expert at these toys and I'm dealing with something nasty and dark side. But nevertheless, maybe as something to get as a battle car, one to destroy in your battles, you know, uh, you can get this and smash it up or whatever, or use it as parts, look like a wrecked bumblebee. Do with it what you want, but don't be amazed with it as a real toy, because um, it's only going to disappoint you and frustrate you a lot, just as it did with me. As for Ragdoll Optimus Prime here, what I will do is I'll pull out a real Optimus Prime, it's a slightly smaller scale, this set here was, well, just around about $130 full price. Ended up, picked it up for about $47. It went half price and then half price again. And I'll make a comparison of this Optimus Prime uh, to Ragdoll. Can the real Optimus Prime please stand up? Well, he is standing up. And what is brilliant about the real toys, apart from their expense, is for the fact that you can really pose them and make them fairly aggressive and they will keep their pose. 
that's what the rule toys are all about. Let me just put him back a bit because I want to manipulate this other nasty critter here. The problem with this clone here is that the joints are so loose on this thing, it's almost totally useless as a stand-up toy. It just wants to flop around all the time. I'm not even going to try and bother transforming this clone Optimus Prime here. Uh, but we have to think of a really sinister way to get rid of him off this planet. Up nice and close, this is the real Optimus Prime. Looking how vivid the colours are. Detailing's nice, it feels nice in hand. It doesn't feel like it's going to rip your hands apart. Like I've already said, the joints are lovely. It'd want to be made right because it is in not a cheap toy. Mind you, it's going to be a lot of fun having this and looking after it. And if you're an Optimus Prime collector, I dare say you get fairly excited when you're getting nice ones like this. As for this dark side monster, let's take a closer look because often when you scrutinize this up close, you start to see the dark side. That's, I mean, just look at this. It's just wobbly doblies. The painting on it is, well, it's okay. I've seen worse on dark side toys. It is detailed, only probably for the fact it's been completely ripped off a real Optimus Prime. Yeah, it. some people are probably saying, well, Leo, it looks pretty good, but it just disappoints. It's very, very sharp in hand. It's going to cut you to shreds if you keep playing with it. As for the fact, I think the worst thing I keep saying is it just will not do a stance on you. They say you come in and glue it up or something. Uh, but then again, what's the point of doing that? Because it's meant to be a nice transforming toy. You can see there, the plastic bits aren't finished properly there. It's just there to snare you, really. You'll never get the satisfaction out of this toy. And remembering that this is actually a fairly expensive little exercise to buy this knockoff. Well, as for this Lazy Bones Optimus Prime knockoff as is, I'm thinking of putting a fairly hefty explosive charge right in his core. And that means drilling a hole in the back here, getting it right in his middle piece. And maybe, just maybe, he'll blow to smithereens. Hey, boys and girls, you heard about the new Transformers film? You know what it's called? Age of Explosives. I'd say that's a successful transformation. Okay, let's see what's happened to Optimus Prime. Um, I think he looks far more interesting now. Those pieces there were behind the table on the floor. I picked those up. His head is actually way over there. Let me go and grab his head because we want to see his head, don't we? Whoa! Okay, there is his head. Um, what was that? One of the arms. And this is the uh, torso. There's a lot of blue tack basically making him stand up because he was a rag doll Optimus, as we saw before. And I'm quite surprised. Um, I can't go into too much detail about how it was set up, or else I'll get flagged. But I was worried for the fact it's just a it's a toy made up of all these little components. How was I going to get rid of the bulk of it? And I was I was really aiming for the chest area. And I think as you can see, well, <laughs> the chest is gone. Okay, um, maybe I should have gone for the chest and the leg. Then he could have danced. Uh, but I'm actually very very happy with the destruction that's gone on. And to follow up on a suggestion I saw on my first Dark Side Transformers video was the idea that these Transformers can be used as dressing as, let's say, a robot that's been attacked. And I think that's a very, very good use for them. So there's a, an example that I've set up. And the other curious aspect about this explosion was, and remember we just blew up the chest, was there was not many little tiny fragments. I think there's a few bits that I haven't found, but that's the only small fragments that I've found are uh, the bulk of it. It was up on the table edge behind me, but they were parts that size, uh, which is a bit unusual. But anyway, as a dressed look of a robot in distress, that looks fantastic. Transformers, robots in distress. Okay, so that's knock off Optimus Prime out of the way. We've got Bumblebee to go next. And I think the sheer raw energy and simplicity of Mr. Hammer can come along and give Bumblebee a new panel job. Normally with Transformers toys, you're counting the steps. In transformation. Well, let's count the hammer blows that Mr. Hammer does to transform Bumblebee into a new version. Okay, Mr. Hammer, get ready to do some major pedal beating. Let's count the hits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice transforming, Mr. Hammer. You did it so simply. Oh, Mr. Hammer, thumb of your best handiwork I've seen.
Oh, as we have seen many a time now, Mr. Hammer there uh, does spectacular work at pulling down these knockoff toys. Uh, Bumblebee is completely obliterated. And that was his little face there. How cute, hey? Probably ripped right off a real toy. You can tell me you're the experts, not me. The sound chip and all the rest of it was over here. There it is there. Not looking too crash hot at the moment, is it? And I think there were three batteries in there and they've sort of landed there. A uh, little speaker over there, but nevertheless, it has been pulled down and uh, looks spectacular. Once again, you can put it up as a bit of wreckage and it would look like a destroyed transformer. Oh, and there's also, let's not forget the little gun here. Let's just do a Mr. Hammer quickie here. Let me put that there. Okay, Mr. Hammer, ready to show us your stuff. He's pretty cool quickies, isn't he? Okay, Mr. Hammer, let's do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, so simple. So simple. Oh, and his little sacrificial arms come off again. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Oh, and almost forgot, you know, you can lay the wreckage out like this as, well, basically a transformer that's had a bit of trouble. Looks more like a bombing, doesn't it? But nevertheless, uh, like I said, there was a YouTuber who landed the comment and said the fake Transformers are great for a scene of battle damage. And that certainly is one. If you're wondering, I do keep the broken up bits that I use in the Dark Side videos. I've got a whole box, which is quite awesome, all the broken up parts. I have found the Bumblebee that was sold individually. I'm pretty sure that's the same one as the one we just hit with Mr. Hammer. And that was $29.00. So there's some pretty easy money to be made via the Transformers Dark Side toys. We're going to take a look at these toys here. I think I've showed one of these in another video. I can't, it wasn't a Transformer video, uh, but I spoke about these toys here. I think the Toy Crush is going to come out and get rid of all that rubbish there. But the next one I will take a look at are these very strange transforming toy cars here. One, two, and uh, three. Well, just because the toy is transforming doesn't mean it's a knockoff of Transformer toys. I believe these cars transform. I think the screen one transforms into that there. Maisto, how do you say the company name behind this one? That's the back of the box there. It was $4, just a cheapy toy I found at the reject shop. They're called Robo Rods. That's the series there. I'm not familiar with American car brands and styles. And 2008 uh, copyright on these. That's a fair time ago now. And I'll get these little toys out because I'm curious to see them. Maybe you are as well. Maybe you say, oh, yeah, these were around years back and they're not relevant today. Ugh, okay. But it's funny, the reject shop is a place often where toys go to die. Toys that uh, don't get sold. You can sort of see stuff that, uh, that's gone off the boil there. That's the second car. I've only got three of these. And your third one. Oh, yeah. Nice and red. Yeah, okay. It's all. <laughs> it feels a bit light and plasticky. Um, don't know how to do it. I'm making the right sounds, but I can't do it. Ah, the instructions. Well, I looked on the back of the box. There's the red guy made up. Uh, I'll be quite blunt here. This isn't much chop. I'm not getting much fun out of this. Uh, I wouldn't want to play with it too much. I think it would just fall apart. Came with a bit of a boombox thing from the 1980s. Yeah, that's how old I am to remember those. Let's take a look at the next car. Well, this black it looks like a Holden to me. <laughs> it's probably not a Holden. You probably think, what are you saying, Leo? Came with a guitar, Angus Young's guitar. And we can transform this. Uh, maybe. I think they're all about this, basically the same sort of thing we transform. Yeah, that's the same sort of movements as what was on that other car. Okay, I think I know why these are in the reject shop, and we can do the green guys well. <sighs> Same movements, yeah, yeah. Almost go to sleep doing this one. These are actually easy. Don't even, to, don't even have to make the sound to do it. <laughs> and uh, that one came with a set of weird headphones that I dare say you go like that. How funky is that? So, okay, they're little cars, they sort of transform, they can't see any Decepticon or Autobot things on them. I don't think they're rips of anything, I think they're just very sort of unclassy transforming vehicles. Push those aside, and I will bring in this pile of wreckage here. I think I've spoken about one of these in another video, but we're just going to talk a little bit more about these. All these are going to die. Well, these transforming construction toys were in the knockoff markets, uh, they weren't cheap. 
I think the deception really is for the fact we've got these sort of symbols here on the packaging. My son saw this and he just thought Transformers. Okay, the back of the packaging looks like that. Shows there's a whole bunch of different series of these toys. And sure enough, one by one, we end up getting them. And, well, as I found out, um, they break really easily. There's no fun in these. And like there, just the plastic bit has broken. And I can no longer get that back in there to be part of that. Um, they're just, the plastic thing there, there's a lot of metal in these, but the plastic components on it is really brittle. Often the plastic is the wrong sort of plastic. And then when you look over these toys, you'll notice that they've got very Decepticon-ish type symbols on them. If you look in the right spots, and I think on the back of the cement mixer here, there's another one. I mean, to me, it's just very, very borderline stuff. Uh, some cool things, like the fact there were guns hiding inside cement mixers, and, yeah, I don't know, sort of a bit of a diesel 10 factor to some of them. I mean, maybe you could rip parts of these off, and you could match them onto toy trains and make them look really funky. But there's one thing I do know, is that all these toys here are going to be fantastic test fodder, they put through the Toy Crusher because there's a lot of metal in these. And I've got some Disney car diecast toys to put through, and I think maybe we'll do a bit of a test run to get rid of these because I think Toy Crusher is actually a fairly popular little item. And along with those construction toys into the Toy Crusher, I think this transforming bus can go. Already broken across the top. It cost $14.95, 5 cents off $15. I purchased it at a leading. Shopping center, we won't name, name names, but I will transform this thing for you. You can tell me if this is a knockoff or not. I think the legs put there and little feet come out here. Once again, my son spotted this and of course he started screaming for it. I think the arms do funky stuff here, if you can see it. Okay, let me stand this thing up and you can tell me if it's a transformer or not. Okay, there's the head and the helmet. To me, that looks very Transformers. This is the older I'll run to put it through the crusher, the red bus first, working up to these bigger guys. I've broken apart uh, that style there. I've actually got two of those because I think the body of that is a bit big for the crusher and I've broken it up to that. The toy crusher can be a little bit tricky to video. There's not much space for cameras and it also can be dangerous because stuff can come flying back up out of the crusher. And I'm going to put a camera, this time a GoPro, looking down like that at the debris because I'm worried about the metal in the toys hitting the camera if I was in the bin. Okay, time for some really big transforming! Woo! Oh! My goodness, it just jumped straight out! Go in there again! Coming in for Transformer! Cleared and I hit reverse. Okay, I've got a bit more crushing to do. Whoa! Oh, 
fell in there. Oh, they cut me back out. Whoa! Oh, don't forget the accessories. Oh, don't forget the accessories. So I'll try that big metal piece again. Oh, my God, for punishment. Oh yeah, the Toy Crusher has spoken and spoken loudly. A lot of people like the Toy Crusher. I don't often use it. I think I'm going to have to go through the pain of setting it up and use it a bit more because it is such a very neat and fast way of getting rid of these rubbish toys. And boy, did it do an excellent job at it. Just coming in for a closer look at some of the destruction. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Uh, the blades in that Crusher stop for nothing although there's one piece of metal that it did stop for had the reverse but the second piece which was large ended up going through i think it was big pieces like that it was having a bit of trouble to munch on mind you it can be fairly indiscriminate there are parts that come through that are basically unscathed so my dreams of having like a custom diesel 10 might not be over yet uh but there's not many things i could pick up that are unscathed uh the bulk of the stuff in there has been totally destroyed just trying to see if I can find bits of that bus. There was bits of that DJ thing, wasn't it? Oh, there's the hair from the Frozen Dolls, or whatever it was. Remember that? Got caught up in there. That is a part of that bus. It's not looking too crash hot at the moment. Okay, well, I pushed that mess aside. Wooshka! And we'll bring in the next thing we're going to take a look at. And it is a very strange remote controlled Optimus Prime that looks like Megatron. Very cool looking indeed. Okay, the dark side certainly has some very strange variations going on. This could be either really bad or really, really bad. Lights and sounds, wonderful transformers on the back of the box. It looks like that. There was two options of these. I ain't ever, ever saw that one. Who knows, that one may or may not exist. The dark side is like that. $15 it was. The price is there on the top. And also, if we take a look underneath here, we will understand how to put the batteries into this very wondrous and very strange Tank Optimus Prime. Coming in for the unboxing. Uh, oh, I say that, don't I, when I'm doing this? Probably get very disturbed, don't you? Here it comes. Oh, looks sort of fancy. When you see it out of its box. Well, it probably comes across on camera as looking half decent and exciting, but hey, you don't know until you play with it. It's boxed up like real toys, and the fact that it's got those sort of key things, which is, I think are better than snipping wire. That's quite fancy, isn't it, to have those? And hopefully it is free of the box and we can take a bit of a better look at this thing. Ooh, very uh, Ringo Dingo, isn't it? Hey, I've got to put an antenna stalk on that bit there. It feels extremely light in the hands. That's not a good sign, is it? And the remote control uh, looks like that. It's Bumblebee. I mean, how fancy is that? Is that a rip off a real toy or is that just something dark side? Can you let me know? So I better do the right thing here. I've got to put that stalky bit over the antenna at the back. Okay, time to get some batteries into this. Uh, nine volt into the remote control unit. No screws in this one, so I couldn't get a screw shot. Uh, it's very dark side, but in fact there isn't a screw. It, normally there'd be a screw in there, nothing to unscrew this one. And I cover up the name of the batteries. Well, I'll tell you the story again, or will you just get angry? It is rooted back to many, many years ago to someone who accused me uh, for doing ads for a battery company. And ever since then, I was spooked by that and I cover up brand names of batteries. Anyway, let's turn it on and give it a fire. It does help if I actually do turn it on. Well, there are lights on that thing. We will take a close look, but let me drive around for you. Fire! Oh, fire! oh no. Fire! Oh, it's uh, fairly fire! radical. Well, I'm, it's it's quite fast, I tell you. Uh, whoa. No, whoa. Oh. This is getting a disaster, I know. Oh, it's out of control! It is totally out of control! I'm not pressing a button! Oh. Man, that thing went totally out of control on me. Scary. Okay, uh, well this thing has got a complete mind of its own. It is powered up. I'm not pressing a button on this remote. Uh, welcome to the dark side. Okay, very, very scary. It's very sprightly on its feet. Uh, I don't know whether there's something else affecting this. Probably someone turning on the TV next door is operating this thing, who knows? Oh, boy, I've just turned it off. Uh, very, very scary. Maybe that locks on. But the... Oh, let me give it one more turn. I'll give it one more turn. And if it goes crazy, uh, we'll just have to... Have, well, leave it at that. 
Okay, behave yourself. Forward, first. Oh, back, forward, back, forward. Whoa, it's uh, doing its own thing again. Doing its own thing. Oh, what am I going to do? No. I can't turn it off. It's just driving. Whoa. Well, come back, come back. Well, maybe this is how you play with it. Just keep ramming it until it stops. Well, there's nothing I can do here to control this. It's totally run away. That's what I've got to hit the off button. Then you can do. Wow, what a nightmare toy! It remote controls for a couple of goes, and then it goes on a complete rampage. I'll give it one more try. Okay, I'll turn it on. Don't move. Drop the gun. Okay, let's hope we can have a bit more control. Fire. Forward, Fire. And back. Oh, lost control. Lost control. Fire. It's actually sad because. In a strange way, it's not a bad toy, if only fire. it did as I asked fire. it to do, and fire. it's going out of control again. I cannot control it. Out of control. And it's on the floor. Well, that's going to disappoint some people because uh, I was hoping it was going to be something that was half decent because it is so strange. I like this for the fact that it's very strange. Maybe there's someone out there who is a bit of an electronics buff and they could suggest something I could do to maybe try and fix that. Uh, it's classic welcome to the dark side um, if only it worked and of course it doesn't uh, I'm gonna try and keep this I don't want to destroy it because uh, who knows there might be a very simple fix to this and I think it's a great example of what is very strange but I will finish this video with something a bit of a treat we will come in and take a look at this Optimus Prime here uh, yeah okay and we're gonna blow this boy up Okay, well, it looks like we're trying to emulate Optimus Prime here. It was $8. It wasn't bought at the dark side market, so I can go to basically shops and suburbs to find this stuff. The back of the box looks like this. Okay, and I'd also like to take you in closer to read some of the stuff that's set on the box. Along the very top of the box, it says that RM1. It's got some pretty cool artwork there that may excite some people. Probably been ripped off uh, Transformers earlier format of it. It's got a picture of that. Showing that it transforms from vehicle to robot. Down the bottom of the front of the box, it reads very strange there Robot Masters 01 Wrecker Hook. There is that read there. Uh, I think it's Chinese, but then again, I may be wrong. And that read there, again, I can't read it, but are these like attributes to the toy? Like speed, power, whatever else? Am I deciphering that correctly? That picture there, I wonder if that says vehicle and that says robot. And the back of the box at the top was that piece of very curious artwork. Uh, they say the Transformers fans uh, can tell me what era that's from, because I can't tell. Okay, coming in for the unboxing. Uh, I bet you this is a really ragtag Optimus Prime. I uh, just got that feeling by the way it looks in box. Ah, I need all the strength of a thousand men to get this out. There's actually constructions down there. Ooh, hello. How you going? Hey, man, this just feels like absolute. You said a very bad word there. <laughs> I'll just reach in here and get this out. A bit of a mystery as well. I don't think there's any English on this at all. Ugh. I think it discusses about doing the transformation there. Ooh, wee, eh? What do you reckon? boys and girls. Well, the crinkly bit of the thing that was holding in Optimus there had that bag of goodies there. There's some sort of gun here, which just actually oh, it fires. Can you believe that? It's spring-loaded and will fire. Okay, a wondrous, wondrous, isn't it? And there is that there, and also an axe. Uh, yeah, a bit strange. Oh, that there is the artwork that was uh, behind the plastic bubble, if that makes any sense. This is that bonus plastic bag. It looks like two little hands in here. That would probably, I don't know, dress into the toy. Are they little hands? Optimus hands? They are, aren't they? Ooh, wee! Okay, as for the toy, and here comes an infamous in-hand appraisal. 
It looks like there's an exhaust stack missing. Has that fallen off on the table here? I don't know. I have to go back and look at the video. I'm too lazy to look at the moment. It, um... What's the best way to describe this? It doesn't feel like the lowest of the low, although it's not far from it. It's got a fair bit of articulation going on in this thing. Okay, so you'll need that articulation to do transformation, won't you? Like, I'm not seeing bits just fly off in this, and I am stretching it out a bit. You ever seen Optimus Prime do that before? You have now. Uh, yes, yeah, so I don't know if I could say uh, it's like super, super dark side, but it's... It, um, it's, I put, oh, I just had a bit come off of the exhaust pipe. Or well, maybe it is super, super dark side. Yeah, this head bit doesn't feel right. In fact, the face helmet bit, yeah, no, nah, sorry, boys and girls, it's super, super dark side. It just falls apart. It's sad to see, isn't it? I will try to do this into, into uh, Prime Mover for you because I'm sort of curious to see how it looks. And I'm sure you are as well. But the headless Optimus Prime, like a nightmare, coming at you. Well, looking back on the instruction sheet, uh, it does go into fairly refined detail on how to transform this beast. Uh, there's actually two sides to this. Seven, eight, nine, but I can't read that language, so maybe this is totally useless to me. And there are 12 steps to get to the prime mover. Well, I'll give this a go. What have I got to lose apart from an exhaust stack and maybe a head? Maybe I can pull this off. A little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Next step is to wrench the driver's cab up this way. Ugh. Oh, crunch, crunch, crunch. I hope I didn't break anything. And then spin it round. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, I don't like those sounds. Oh, I'm doing as the instructions say, and it doesn't want to transform for me. I'll say it again. Welcome to the dark side. Or is it just me? Oh, I don't like the sound when it makes it like that. Sorry if you're a Transformers fan, you're probably crying. The problem seems to be down here. Oh, man. And I just can't get... Oh, oh man. I'm surprised parts aren't breaking off this. Oh, I have got it to spin around. Oh, I think I'm nearly finished. Okay, the back wheels are there. Oh, I'm nearly done. So the last thing to do is to push those down there. And voila, I think we have transformed into the Prime Mover. Optimus Prime there. Um, I've got one of the exhaust stacks which goes on here. I don't know whether I lost one or it didn't have two at the start with. I haven't worked it out yet. You'll tell me, I know. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, that closer scrutiny. Um, ooh, what do you reckon, hey? It probably presents far nicer on camera than what it is to me in hand here. I'm missing the head because it flew off earlier on when I was playing with it. It looks like Optimus Prime. I don't know whether this is a, uh, a copy of an earlier toy. I'll rely on my Transformers fans, the hordes of them, to tell me. Because I'm not even going to play out as if I know about this because I know nothing. Yes. $8. What do you reckon? I dare say that's fairly inexpensive for a Transformer toy. But I really don't think this is going to give much uh, play, much value. Because I think after a bit of play, it's going to basically just start to fall apart. I don't know whether I can just push a wheel off or not. No, it's not, it's not the worst of the worst, um, but certainly you can see it opening up there. It's not, you know, obviously it's not as good as the real toys. Hmm. I think what we'll do with this one is we will blow it up in uh, Prime Mover mode because we blew up a robot before. We'll blow it up like that. And maybe to make him look half funky, I'll load on that crazy gun that shoots that missile as something to look like a load. It looks weird, doesn't it? That thing there, and there's that other gun there. Put that on the back. He's got some spare hands. Maybe we can throw that down the hole there. Fill up a void. And, well, his head's there too. We'll stick that on somewhere. Okay, Optimus Prime is loaded. I'm primarily trying to take out this area on both sides here. Two big charges in there. Let's see if I can turn this 12-step transformer into a easy one step. Believe me, this is much faster than the Toy Crusher. Whoa, a uh, nice one-step transformation there, Optimus Prime. Okay, I think that tells a story. I think it looked fairly interesting. I can't really tell down in my garage until I take it up to my computer. 
Uh, these are the only large parts uh, that were left, and I didn't have any charges in the back of Optimus Prime. The, the Prime Mover, well, used to be here. <laughs> it is now no longer, and remember, I was really focusing the two charges in this area here, and I've annihilated the Prime Mover there. That's one side of it, I think. That was one of the exhaust stacks there, but it's even broken. The other side was that, because the sides of it were the arms, and down on the floor... Uh, and a little bit on the table, this is all i found. Uh, it has been totally annihilated. Well, seeing the way the explosives ripped into this plastic, it's telling us a material science story that, well, we're dealing with something that's fairly shoddy. Mind you, it was a fairly big bang inside there. But i got to talk about a bit of material science or else this video gets flagged for fun. Yeah, those explosives, they're very powerful. There'd be fragments here that I would be basically so small, they're basically being vaporised. Uh, I don't think the head's there. Remember, the head was split into two parts. That there is an arm. Uh, I don't know if that's the ones I just sat on the top or part of the toy. Mind you, there would be parts of that. They've been blown off, haven't they? Yeah, on both sides there. Uh, obviously, that's a part of the windscreen area. That is obviously the windscreen. But the head is, I think, missing in action. Two wheels on the prime mover front there, that was the axle. Uh, and if you're one of those people doing you know, bomb investigations, you'd be looking for, well, where is evidence of explosive devices here? And I know what those explosive devices were made of, but those little bits of thread there were parts of the device. That's one of the larger parts here. Imagine trying to piece this thing back together. But then again, that's what some people do as a job when they do explosives investigations, don't they? They've got to go and recreate uh, the scene. Same thing with those air crash investigators. I think this piece here was the bottom part somehow. I don't know. It's a real puzzle. Uh, that is because it has been really blown apart. And well, there was the, the joins there where the prime movie used to be. Oh, nasty stuff, isn't it? Of course, there was no charges in the back end. I just held those other bits and bobs on with blue tack. They somehow stayed on. Uh, yes, explosives can be very, very nasty stuff indeed. Oh yeah, a lot of damage, a lot of very nasty, gnarly damage. And the only part that I've worked out that goes back together there is that socket area there. Okay. <laughs> That'd be a huge job to try and sort this out and reconstruct it. Because that one there, the, the socket is still in there. It stayed intact. Very tricky stuff to uh, try and sort that out. Anyway, you could set up all of that chaos into something like that and call it Optimus Prime. It's a very bad day at the office. I think it looks pretty cool. Hey, I've got to leave this video here. I hope you enjoyed this Transformers Dark Side video. And up the end of my videos, I always say this. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Transformers!